All right, I'm going to kick it off. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody, to History Lessons. I'm your host, the journalist Sincere. Today, we have a special guest. Some of you may know him as Deadly Threats, others as Threats or Just Threat. Uh, we have him here today, all the way from Inglewood, California. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Yeah. Okay. You can hear me? I'm here. Okay. Cool. Uh, we're going to take it all the way back and then bring it up to what you have going on in 2023. Uh, for those who may have forgotten, may not have never known, can you take us back to where Deadly Threats was born and raised? Uh, I was born and raised in Inglewood, California, and uh, home of the body bag, as Ice T would say. You know, me and Cube, Ice Cube, we stayed around a corner from each other. So we, same area, you know, two steps from Compton, right in the middle of South Central. You know, Gardena to the south, Inglewood to the east, west. That's what it is. So you knew Cube early on, pretty much before any of the uh, uh, legends that you came came after him. So Cube was early on with uh, Threat? Well, actually, I knew of him because me and, you know, me, Jinx, and Yo-Yo, and Dub C, and Candyman, and, you know, we all went to the same school. So during his rise to success, me and Jinx, we would be in class instead of doing our homework. <laughs> we would be just... <laughs> listening to his old, you know, some of his stuff on cassette. So I knew of him earlier before we even actually met. Okay. But all Take that time, we only lived like eight blocks from each other. Gotcha. Take us back to a day in the life of uh, Deadly Threats, teenage years in California. Whoa. Now that's a, that's a, that's a book. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a clip. Give us a couple of cliff notes. Well, I mean, growing up and South Central, Inglewood, California, uh, during them days. Well, most of those days I was incarcerated. So I was actually off the streets. Uh, but when I was on the streets, uh, you know, very, very vivid, very alive, very dangerous. It is what it is, you know. Right. And uh, not a place you would want to you know, live as Cube used to say, you might want to visit. You don't want to live here. <laughs> right. <laughs> what were you seeing early on as far as uh, some of your favorite musical influences? Not necessarily hip-hop, but what was Deadly Threats listening to earlier on? Oh, early on? Man, I was a Beatles fan. I was a Beatles fan. I go, I go all the way back to the Beatles. Me and a couple of my buddies, we used to, um, we used to perform like, I was maybe seven six seven years old and uh his dad was a um he was a ex-military guy and so he would come home he had all the instruments ready the drums the saxophone uh the, the piano like everything and we would listen to the beatles records and we would duplicate them and mimic them and so when i first came out with my record they threatened me. They said, we're going to play that old tape because we have it on tape. <laughs> Try to frame you early, huh? Yeah, shout out to my boy Stone Mac and my boy Trey. And um, so that's where my first musical actually influence actually came from. And they still had a tape, so I don't want to talk loud. You have some early threat early on. Oh my goodness, bro. I don't even want to talk about it. Next subject. All right, gotcha. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about hip hop. Uh, some would say they got into hip hop through break dancing, graffiti. For you personally, how'd you get into hip hop? Well, that, that was my avenue as well. Uh, we used to break dance. I'm from a crew called the Wild Style Crew. And um, we used to break dance against the New York City Breakers, Rocksteady. They used to come down here to the Radiotron, and we would battle them. And as a matter of fact, that's why I first met um, uh, up with uh, 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 what's those guys from Miami that was doing those songs. Damn, I can't, I can't believe I forgot his name. Matter of fact, he just passed away from the uh, Miami hip hop group. I forgot their names. Uh, two Live Crew. So one day, one of the Two Live Crew members was kind of sick this night. 
And we was up there to break dance. We was up there looking for New York City crew because they had supposed to been coming down here to battles from New York. And uh, one of their members was sick. And so I helped them carry it in their equipment and stuff. And that's how I met the uh, two live crew, like early on. It was like back, shit, I want to say 80s. You know, one of the years that I was out of jail for once or something like that. And um, we met up with them and stuff because they was performing that night. We, we we didn't know who, we didn't care who was performing. We, we, we came to battle. Uh, and I think it, it, if it wasn't New York City crew, it was... Um, uh, rock steady or so. it was one of those crews that we were battling that night. So yeah, that's so that's how I kind of got in the game, you know. So what was next for you after B boying? Uh, at what point did you start uh, putting the pad to the pen? Well, I started writing. I can remember the first song that I was uh, writing. And that was Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, and I think that was right before Curtis Blow had came out. So this was like maybe 78, 70, you know, 77, 78, one of those. And uh, me and one of my buddies, a couple of my buddies, we were we were trying to, you know, remake the song. And it was called, um, what the hell was the name of that song? But it was, it was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It was one of their first Halloween songs. As a matter of fact, it was a Halloween song. And, uh... And we mimicked it and we changed all the words. So that was my first time going through writing music. So that was about 77, 78. Okay. At what point did you start taking uh, MC in serious? Uh, I never did. <laughs> I never did. I never really took MC serious. And I'm going to tell you why. Because most people look at it as a job. And for me, it just wasn't a job. It was more of a craft. It was just like a craft that you like doing. Like you play, like playing video games, you like playing basketball. You like, it was more of a craft to me. So I never took it serious. And even to this day, I realize the sincere, the, you know, the seriousness of it. But I still don't take it serious like that. <laughs> you might get in your little feelings with something happens. Action! <laughs> hey, those sounds are so familiar. I hear those sounds every day. So that's that's nothing. Yeah, had to they're, be probably, they're probably they're probably going to think it's more on my end than your end. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's over here in Indiana, y'all. So don't trip. <laughs> okay, but uh, the only time I took it serious was when Jay Z dissed me on um, on the Black Album. That's the only time I ever I think I took MC in theory. And I was like, oh, man. I was following this guy. He just dissed me. <laughs> and I was getting phone calls. People were calling me like, hey, you and Jay-Z going at I was like, not that I know of. <laughs> wow, that's a fun fact I never knew of. As yeah. We were, so, yeah as, I'm as, giving, as, giving you yeah. exclusive stuff, bro. So just. Yeah, yeah, stay tuned. As we go down the timeline, we will revisit the Black Album. And I'm, I'm yeah. guessing it's from the song Threats, right? Uh yeah, put you under the mattress like drug money. Okay, we right will. <laughs> okay, put it put it pause on that. We will get to that momentarily. Uh, okay. Talk us, to us a little bit about your earlier groups, like Microphone Mafia. Was that the earliest crew you uh, were involved with? How did you know about Microphone Mafia? This is prudent information. This is this is almost like knowing somebody's social security number. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that but but yeah, microphone mafia man. Me and Bob, we started that off right, and he the one that came up with the name actually. And so I was like, oh, this is hot. We got to do something with this. And so you know, us and a couple of the groups that we were you know during that time, he was working with you know K9 Posse and LL Cool J and all of them. So you know, he took the time out to do this i'm like okay this is serious because if he wants to do it this must be serious so microphone mafia uh i don't know if you guys heard of the mc k-born but k-born uh was one of the top mcs over there during that time and i think he was from philly or from new york or something like that i still talk to k-born i haven't talked to him in a minute but you know that's my buddy uh him and boy wonder and uh, I forgot the other guy, uh, Devastate Me. And th th these guys were dope. These guys were dope. Like, dope, dope. Like, uh, like, 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 I thought I was cool. I didn't think I was the dopest, but I thought I was cool. 
I stepped in on the scene, I was like, whoa, okay, we got work to do. I love I love that part of it though. That, that's the fun part. That's what makes it more not serious, but like competition, like a game, like a basketball game or a football game or anything. Right. Did you guys uh ever get signed or did you uh did anything ever materialize on wax? As far as the microphone mafia? Yes. No, we we dissipated it. This is kind of just, you know, everybody went their separate ways. But the people that were involved with that, uh, you know, that was a lifetime experience, I think, for all of us. Just to, you know, let us know that we were worth something. You know what I mean? We wasn't just doing it just to be just doing it, you know. And so that, that did help all of us, I think, in that aspect. So after the microphone mafia reciprocated, um, I think that's the word you use. Um, where did Threat find itself? I found myself um, in jail. No, I wasn't in jail. I, I just got out. Um, I found myself going into more of a writer's position. And so I just started doing a lot of writing. I think I just wrote a song uh when i got over to cube after that i signed with ice cube i think in 92 or 93 or something somewhere around there um and when i signed the street knowledge that that kind of like that propelled everything you know that got a lot of stuff going in other words so you know as far as my name being out and all of that you know Prior to signing with Cube, what other dues did you pay uh, getting your name out there? Maybe block parties, carrying equipment. How did you get your name out there earlier on? Well, earlier on, my name was kind of out, you know, just in the streets, I guess you could say, and in the industry a little bit. But once I did Colorblind with Cube on Death Certificate, that that pretty much propelled everything. That That got everything started. And so I had Easy looking for me. He wanted me to, you know, start on his new group, which is Bone Thugs and Harmony. And um, he unfortunately he passed away. We lost him, but that was one of the, you know, projects. I was like, wait a minute, he, <laughs> you know, I'm signing the cube, man. I can't just be over here messing with you, <laughs> you know. But that was my buddy, and so you know already so we was already kind of like cool before the, this stuff even started even happening already so. right at what point does la zoo come in the picture i don't want to jump too soon or is or la well, zoo the, already in motion the zoo came in the picture be, right when i was signing to ice cube because okay. because i was watching how he was developing the lynch mob so you know i so i, I had already you know, came already and started. I had my name for my group without even having my group yet. And so I was on some real ice cube shit. <laughs> I was like, I was learning. So and so I had already started developing the group and started developing the name. And then now I was down to just picking members that I wanted to be a part of the establishment. Uh, who was a part of that establishment earlier on? Uh, actually, uh, Cuckoo. Uh, he's retired now. Uh, my buddy Nas, he's retired now. Um, uh, Fizz Goldman, um, Mac Doe, Hercules, Cali Casino, Norman Bates, Third Rock, Cliff Rock. Uh, it was kind of deep. Like we started off like with a nice little amount of people and they were all like really, really, really and Mac 10 actually he too was actually part of our group as well. You know, we didn't get to do a whole lot of work, but he was he performed with us a couple of times and everything. So we, we we was getting off to a nice good start. And um, you know, once again, you know, everybody wants to be the, the guy, so they you know, that's when things start splitting up. <laughs> so that's what happened, unfortunately. 